Amen. This is a day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Father God, we thank you this morning. Now we come, God, before you. God, we ask now that you would touch our hearts, our minds. Oh, God, bring us in. Oh, God, help us to get focused on you. Yes, God, we come to celebrate this man and this woman. Hallelujah. Our pastor, hallelujah, and our first lady. But God, they will tell you right now to give God some praise. Hallelujah, before we do anything. And so, God, we exalt your name in this place today. God, we ask that you would have your way, move by your spirit, and anoint for your glory, oh God. Now, God, we thank you today, God, for hallelujah for our pastor and first lady, oh God. You said in your word, God, to give honor where honor is due. God, you told us not to muzzle the ox, God, that treads out the coin, oh God. God, that their labor, hallelujah, God, is worthy and they will be rewarded. And so, God, we thank you, oh God, for what you have done in their lives, oh God. We ask now, God, that you would move by your spirit and anoint them even the more for your glory, oh God. God, we ask that you would lead them and guide them in the way you would have them to go, oh God. Move by your spirit and anoint them, oh God. God, then we ask you to bless the God to touch their bodies, oh God. God, that they will continue to do what you call them to do, oh God. Heal in the name of Jesus. Deliver in the name of Jesus. And set them free, oh God. That they will be able, God, to, to, God, to carry this word. Hallelujah, God, in the name of Jesus. God, anoint them now even the more. Bless their families, oh God, in the name of Jesus. God, let your will be done. Let your kingdom come. In the name of Jesus. Have your way in their lives, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Now continue to give them wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, oh God. And God, we will praise you, we will magnify you, and we will give you the glory. In Jesus' name, let every heart say, Amen. Amen. Read from 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 12. And now, friends, we ask you to honor those leaders who work so hard for you, who have been given the responsibility of urging and guiding you along in your obedience. Overwhelm them with appreciation and love. And the word is already blessed. Amen.
bless you. Amen. We are so elated with Jesus' joy that you have come in to help us make our pastor and wife smile on today. The occasion. 1 Timothy 5 and 17 reads, Let the elders that rule well, that rule well, be counted worthy of not just single honor, but what? Double honor. Especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. It is in divine order that we set aside a special day once a year to show our spiritual servant leaders that we appreciate their labor of love. Leading us, amen, to higher heights and deeper depths. Leading up to this day, the great new Bible way family has been planning and prepping. Today we have come to show an abundance of love and gratitude. No, we cannot pay them. Amen? But we can surely show them how much we love and appreciate them for their service. Amen. Our theme this year is celebrating life in ministry Focus on God. The number nine in spirituality or in uh, the kingdom in the Bible means completely, completeness. They have done a complete work. Would you agree? Amen. Amen. We have been led this year by Elder David White, Deacon Steve Jackson, and Mother Jesse Dandridge. Amen. Amen. As I close, it's reaping time. Somebody say, it's reaping time. <laughs> Amen. Something that has remained with me through this pandemic, it says a man cannot reap what he has not sown. Amen. But on the flip side, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. On the flip side of that, we will reap what we have sown. Somebody give God a thank you praise, and let's appreciate our leaders. Stand out of the room, and let's get
thank you for your leadership. We love you. We appreciate you. Thank you for being there in good times and when times are not so good. You're there when we grieved and made the loss of a loved one. When we were sick, when we visited the city. Yeah. When we need encouragement, you're there. Yeah. Just need somebody to talk to. Yeah. You're there. We thank you. Yeah. And we thank you for uh, uh, Pastor. I was trying to find the word pastor in the Bible and I ran across it one time. But basically, it's saying the shepherd of the flock. Yeah. And you truly is the shepherd of this flock. You know, uh, the flock will follow the shepherd. The shepherd truly loves the flock. And we need to focus on what the shepherd says. One of his responsibility is to feed the flock. And he do feed us the word. We thank you for being that strong leader and preacher. I like to hear him preach. You can look at him and you check the Holding them out here, and he look like Shaquille O'Neal standing up there. He didn't really bring the word. One time I saw him preach out of his jacket, and I uh, looked closer. I said, I know Pastor had on a dark suit. Then he started looking light. And I guess the jacket was in the chair, and I said, uh, You know, he got to look mood. Sweet move when you said, mm! mm -hmm. <laughs> slide back. <laughs> and I, I wasn't seeing too good, but I heard you. I said, I've seen that move before. And to myself, I said, if Elder Quick and Elder White picked that jacket up and draped across his shoulders, I said, that was a James Brown. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Well, I talked enough, and my wife said, Get up there and sit down. <laughs> we love you. We love you. We wish God's blessings upon you both.
Bible says to those that endure until the end. So this in morning, I thank God for the ability, for the strength, for the courage, for the wisdom to endure, to serve in the great new Bible way, Church of God in Christ, until the end. But if I hold fast to God's unchanging hands, if I minister according to God's word, then my living shall not be in vain. So it's to God be the glory for the things that he has done. For without God, I have no ability. Without God, I have no wisdom. Without God, I have no courage. So it's to God be the glory for the things that he has done. We give an honor and respect to Superintendent Robinson and my friend, Lady Robinson. Let's give them a good God bless you. We thank God for my husband, Pastor Dennis Rogers, for affording me the opportunity to serve with him at this great church at Greater New Bible Way Church of God in Christ. We thank you, members of the Church of God of Greater New Bible Way. We thank you. We appreciate you. The program committee, Deacon Jackson, uh, Elder White, Mother Dandridge was on board this year. We also thank every committee that assisted in making this day special. Mother Dandridge, Sister Parker, and the decorating committee, I love it. I love it. You did such a wonderful, you did such an awesome job. We thank you for those that were standing at the door. We just simply appreciate you. Thank you, Great New Bible Way, for allowing me to come in to serve and to worship with you. But we could not do this without our family. Amen. Our family praying for us. Amen. Our family telling us, hold on, it's going to be all right. Amen. Our family lifting us up within the midnight hour when we do not see them. So we thank God for our family. And we're asking them to stand at this time. Mother Rogers, we appreciate you. Please stand. Sister June, please stand. Elder and Elder Rogers and Sister Latanya Rogers in the minister's wife circle. And my hats are off to the minister's wife circle. Wave your hands, minister's wife. Oh, we have been having an awesome time. We have not been out front, but we've been having uh, conference calls. We've been having shoebox fun, Sister Quick came up with. But thank you, minister's wife. Sister Shanti Baker and Deacon Ira Baker and the children, please stand. Amen. The Rogers children, please stand. Amen. The twins, and, and I can't call her all their names at this time, but we thank you so much. And we thank God for our children, Sister Chastity, Brother DJ, our grandchildren. And we thank God for Sister Delisha, and she's not here. Because every time she sees something that she thinks is healthy for us, we've been getting boxes of water. It's a new kind of water that she comes up with. So we thank God although she is not here. And also the grandchildren, we appreciate them as well. We thank God Sister Chastity, Brother DJ where are you? If you stay in wait Mr. Jordan. Amen. Amen. We thank God for my cousin, uh, my, my, my friend, my person that we're, we're, we're it's just few of us here in the Little Rock metropolitan area, but Deacon Butler has stood by my side when I was going through cancer. He's a quiet man, but that's my big brother. Yeah. Amen. 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 Praise God. We certainly thank God for, which one is this? Eris. We thank God for her be, being here as well. Amen. Amen. We thank God for uh, the Temple of Restoration family yeah. and those of you who came to celebrate this special day with us and those of you who have prayed for us as well and we dare not forget about mother here. If you will stand and raise your hand. Yeah. Amen. She called us her children Sister Savage. Amen. Mother Savage. And Mother Clara she said she was going to try to be here but she has stood with Pastor Rogers and I. Mother Clark has stood with me before Pastor Rogers and I ever got together. So I dare not uh, not give her love and appreciation for Mother Classy Clark. God bless you. God keep you. 
uh, is my prayer. And we also want to, Mother Donna Robinson had planned to be here with me on today. Uh, but Bishop, she texted me last night. Uh, Bishop Lindsay has lost her sister, Sister Eliza. So therefore, we ask you that you keep the Lindsay family in prayer. God bless you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Yes. Amen. And I don't know about you, but I'm going to rejoice yes. and be glad. Are there any glad hearts in the house over there? Yes. Are there anybody here that knows that you're saved, you're sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, God baptized, got Jesus on your mind, and you're ready to run? Is there anybody in the house today? Do I have a witness here today? They know that had it not been for the Lord.
that we have such great leaders of this church, amen, that are pushing and have their hands in my back and telling me, Pastor, fight on. It, that song was befitted, amen, Sister Chandra. Amen, amen. It, it's what I've been hearing, amen, for over a year or so. Keep fighting. Stay in the fight. Amen. That's what rings in my ear every time I step up to the desk. Amen. To deliver the word of God. Keep on fighting. And because we have kept on fighting, we have reached some souls, amen, that since we went out and come back in, amen, others are join, have joined in with us. So it lets me know that God, amen, is in the midst of all that we have done and continue to do for kingdom building. Not to bring any glory up on ourselves, but it's all about kingdom building. Amen. I'm grateful and I'm thankful. Thank you, Superintendent Robinson. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Maricia Robinson. Amen. For accepting the invitation to come and be with us this Sunday morning. Amen. And I know a lot of people are in their own service, amen, and doing different things. Amen. So that's the reason why I can say I'm grateful today. Amen. When I look around this building, amen, to see you all. Amen. Yeah, we are socially distanced. Amen. Inside. Amen. And everywhere within the ministry. Amen. There are a lot of things. Amen. We have not. Amen. Come back together upon. Amen. But this looks good to me. Amen. This looks good to me. Amen. On this Sunday morning. Amen. Listen. God bless you. God keep you. Amen. Again, First Lady has already recognized our family, our children, the grandchildren, and all of those that are here, amen, that we know that support us, amen, on a continuous basis. Thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you. When you get up here and you know what you're going to say and who you're going to appreciate, but my eyes came to Evangelist Janice Kelly. Amen. That is the mother of Sister Shonda Perry. And I also want to thank God for Mother Evelyn Garrett. How can I forget her? Ever since uh, I've been First Lady, God led me to Mother Garrett. And we thank God for Mother Vanderbilt. We thank God for Sister Quick, who are assisting me. We appreciate everything that you have done. But as I forestated, Mother Gary has been with me from day one. And I have no trouble. Many people cannot say that. I have no trouble, no trouble out of Mother Gary. I have no trouble out of Mother Gary. She's been faithful. Even when she's trying to see about her daughter, she's been faithful. And she still tries to see about First Lady. So don't forget those that stood with you from day one. Mother Gary. I shall never forget you, and I thank God for you continuing on, on the mother's board. But she says, a humble spirit, I have no problem in serving you, and I love you, and I appreciate you. Amen. God bless you again. we just like to say thank you to all of those, amen, those of you that are here, those of you that are watching us by live Facebook, amen, and those that will review this, amen, in the coming days. We cannot say thank you enough and appreciate you enough for all, every seed that has been sown, amen, into this ministry, every act of kindness, every gift of love. We say thank you and to God be the glory. Will you pray for us, amen, as we continue to do the will of God. God bless and keep you is our prayer. Amen, amen. Thank God for being here. Come on, say amen again. Come on, what a mighty God we serve on today. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adores him. What a mighty God we serve. Would you just put those hands together? Certainly we honor God. Amen. For his presence in our lives, for his presence even in this room. Do you feel him in the room on today? Amen. How many of you are expecting God to do something great on today? Amen. I know that we're yet adjusting. Amen. Yet adjusting to how things are to this, what they call new norm, but it's time for us to move on. Is that all right? Yeah. Amen. I am up here to, to present our speaker on today, but yeah. amen. First of all, I want to honor, amen, my wife, my family, amen. I want them to please stand. 
Amen. I want my mom to please stand. Amen. Again, sisters and brothers, stand again. And would everybody join us one more time in just saluting our leader, our pastor, our first lady, one time, amen, everybody standing with me and just giving them a good God bless you one more time. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's only befitting that his name is Pastor Dennis J. Rogers. Why do you say that? Uh, the J, the J. Y'all think it stands for Jerome, but I got a new meaning for it. Uh, because of uh, where he stands and who he is, amen. I renamed him. I, I'm going to call him Joshua today. Is that okay? Why do we call him Joshua? Because he came behind the, the original leader. Our Moses was our father, amen. But now we're in a Joshua generation or in a Joshua movement of this uh, ministry, amen. And uh, from the beginning uh, of your pastorate, uh, we know that they said we would not make it. They said we would not make it, but we are still here today. Uh-huh. Every wall that we have faced, amen, uh, uh, you have led us around. You have led us around those walls, amen, and we have seen walls fall for nine years and counting, amen. Uh, I just want to sum it up by saying my sister said today, millions didn't make it. But we were one of the ones who did. But I just want to say it like this and declare your presence on today that you're going to live to see it happen. Did y'all hear me today? I said we're going to live to see it happen. What is it? Healing in our bodies, amen. The ministry going higher and higher, amen. Every wall that we face, we face the pandemic and we didn't never stop. We didn't never miss one beat. How many of you seen that parking lot packed every week, amen, for over a year, I believe, or right at a year, through the hard times, harsh times, cold weather and warm weather, people from this neighborhood and this church, amen, packed that parking lot out. And pastor, you haven't seen nothing yet. The best is yet to come. Will you just have me say right now, live, 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 live. Now say it like y'all mean it. Now say it like you really got some deliverance power in your body. Just say live, 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 live. Yeah, yeah, you're going to live to see it happen. It's going to happen, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, come on, put those hands together. This is just my testimony for this year. You're going to live to see it happen. Church of God in Christ. Amen. He is a friend. He is a brother. Amen. He is a great leader in this jurisdiction. And on today, Pastor Robinson, the E is not for Earl. The E is not for Earl. First of all, let me just tell you a little bit about him. It's too much to go through it all. But the first E, amen, I'm going to say for his, for his name stands for education. Uh, as a bivocational minister, Robert uh, Pastor Robert Robinson is the Executive Director of Human Resources for Little Rock School District. Let me say and declare publicly, thank you for giving me a chance to teach in the Little Rock School District. Amen, amen. Let me just say this, I wouldn't put out, amen, God just transitioned us out. Amen. We thank you for the door that you opened, for the opportunity that you gave me. Amen. And so many others. We have teachers right here in Greater New Bible that you have opened the doors for. And certainly throughout this entire jurisdiction. Amen. Amen. Anybody knows if you want to do it, he will open up a door for you. 
Amen. The second E stands for empower. Amen. You are a man, amen, who's known to empower people to make a difference. You recognize people for their efforts and make learning new ideas exciting. It's Robert Robinson, a highly recognized keynote speaker, pastor, teacher, and author. Amen. The most frequent heard comment after uh, Pastor Robert Robinson's sermon or speech is, that was just what I needed to hear. And finally, the last E, uh, as I conclude, is I want to say is excellence. Amen. Why do I say excellence? You're excellent in your ministry and the content that you present. Amen. Not only that, we know you to be excellent in your service here in the second jurisdiction of the Church of God in Christ. <laughs> under Bishop uh, Lindsay and now under Bishop Anderson. Amen. You have continued that leadership serving as an administrative assistant. Amen. We know that you are a leader on the local, district, state, and national level, having served in Bishop Blake's, amen, inner circle, amen, as we uh, uh, experience the paradigm shift, as we begin to, amen, look at things a little differently and approach it differently. But I just want to say anybody that served in Arkansas Second, you know Superintendent Robert Robinson. He's what I call an administrative architect. You are that, amen. Anybody, if you want a program put forth, if you want an idea put out, amen, and expressed, and amen, and really pull together, amen, with excellence, call on Superintendent Robert Robinson. Amen. He, amen, I believe he is one who distinguished himself even very early in life. Amen. So much like my father, amen, you were distinguished early. I've seen your picture, amen, on some very old photographs, and you were very young amongst many older leaders. And anybody that has any discernment know that you don't sit in those seats unless they see something great in you. Amen. Amen. And so we thank you for your continued leadership. Amen. Amen. So at this time, we're getting ready to hear from an anointed man of God, from a preaching man of God. Amen. Amen. A leader for such a time as this. And amen. I want to say, Pastor and, and Board, we could not have selected a better leader. Amen. Amen. To come and minister to this church during this time. So after after you will have heard the word, amen, in song by Sister Kelly Powell, we want you to stand to your feet, amen, and clap your hands for Superintendent Robert Robinson. Amen. Pastor of the Temple of the Church, Temple of Restoration Church of God in Christ. Thank you. 
Anybody know that they're a way maker? Anybody know they're turning around for you? Can I get three people just turning around and say, he can still good? Oh, that's it. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. So what's the thank you for? Hallelujah. God, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for Pastor Rogers. Thank you for his wife, labored by his side. Thank you for a new Bible way. The church that you ordained. We thank you for this ministry. God, I pray that you work my mouth and let something be said that would be encouraging to the pastor, his wife, this church, and those that are connected with us via social media and those that are here now. We praise and glorify your name. And as I say often, oh God, take whatever you want to take. But please, Lord, don't take your spirit. God, don't take your spirit. Will thou revive us again? God, don't take your spirit. Your will be done. Your will be done. Your will be done. Will be done. It is so. And before you take your seat, could you take about 30 seconds now and everybody just clap those hands like you lost your mind and give God thanks. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, clap them. Come on and clap them. Come on and thank you. Come on and thank you. Baby, seated in the presence of the Lord. Pastor Rogers, Sister Rogers, I'm just glad to be here with you all on this evening. Uh, you all are special to me, and uh, it means a lot to have people like Pastor Rogers. I said it means a lot to have a pastor like Pastor Rogers. You can't be close to everybody. Amen. Uh, they're, they're close to me. And um, I remember when Bishop Lindsay handpicked Pastor Dennis Rogers. Amen. Said, I want him to be an administrative aide. When he was looking at leaders, young leaders, to look ahead for the future. And then he said, I want Dennis to be one of those. Leaders. And see, Bishop Lindsay had a way of looking at you and, and seeing you in the future. And he will prepare you for the direction God is leading you. Now, now you got to watch it. Some people will lead you in a direction God is not leading you. And you have to know when you need to get off and you know, listen to that voice. Because you got to hear what the Lord is saying, first of all. And so Bishop Lindsay picked him. But everybody uh, can't be close to you. Um, I got some company, y'all. Uh, because Jesus had 70. Then he also had 12. And then when he got ready to go up to the Mount of Transfiguration, he didn't take everybody up there with him. He said, I can't take everybody with me. I just want two to go with me. So, so, so the Lord is saying too that uh, uh, it's depending on how you are serving as to how you can relate to God Himself too. That's why everybody who is a member of the church, they they may be called, but they have not been chosen. Many are called, but few are chosen. 
y'all, you have a chosen, you have chosen leaders here. But let me say this. These are the times that try pastors' souls. These are the times that try pastors' souls. I'm glad this some members traveled with me for temporal restoration in the midst of the pandemic. Yeah. Some people have been in the church since March of last year. Still have not made it. My God, hallelujah. But we're here. But I would like for those who join me with the pastor in the midst of the pandemic, please stand to your feet. Amen. Amen. Please stand to your feet. God bless you. God bless all the preachers. Elder Malone, y'all know him. Say youth president, pre president, and God bless Minister DeAndre. God bless Elder Joseph. God bless Minister uh, Elder Selma in the back. God bless you. Amen. God bless you, Sister Kelly, singing that song in preparation for me. I was influenced by the phrase I heard Thomas, heard about Thomas Paine. Y'all heard of Thomas Paine? That is in history, that is, Thomas Paine. George Washington was about to throw in the towel. And he's, as he's leading the Patriots, getting ready for an American Revolution. And he said, my soldiers, they are hungry. Some are even frustrated. Some feel like giving up. But he said, but if we want a revolution, we got to keep on fighting. Yeah. And then George Washington, General George Washington, got his hand on a pen that was inspired, written by Thomas Paine. And General George Washington read the pamphlet to his soldiers. These are the days, these are the times that try men's souls. That's what he said in 1775, which led the way to 1776, the Declaration of Independence, when the soldiers about to shut down and say, is freedom worth fighting for? Should we throw in the towel? Should we give up? But Thomas Paine wrote the article, Common Sense. There's something that you got to make up your mind that you're willing to separate yourself from for the sake of freedom. Oh, listen, y'all. I, I still think that there's a revolution getting ready to happen here. I know we've been dealing with a pandemic, but I sense a revolution about to happen in Christendom. And you got somebody here who loves God. Give me that pamphlet. This, this, uh, this, this, is so, this, this message, the theme is so timely. Celebrating the life in the ministry focused on God. There's a shift happening in the atmosphere and it's so impacting and so powerful. I feel God is getting us ready for a revolution. I feel God is getting the church ready for a revolution. And it's going to start with somebody who is focused. Focus on God. So my subject today, these are the times that 
try pastor's soul. And if we miss it now, I don't know about tomorrow. As a matter of fact, I don't know about tomorrow, but I know who holds tomorrow. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Second Chronicles, chapter 15. Are y'all praying for me? Second Chronicles, chapter 15. And I will connect the theme verse that you have as well. Look at, listen to verse 5. Verse 5. You have it say amen. You don't have it say hold up. Thank you. Well, hold up. It's in the Old Testament. All right. Can we, can we read? Verse 5. And in those times, now keep in mind, these are the times that try pastors' souls. And in those times, there was no peace to him that went out. of the countries. There were, there was no peace to him that went out, nor to him that came in. There's no peace to those that's left the United States, and no peace to some trying to come into the United States. The pandemic they had us all locked down. I'm scared for you to come in, and I'm scared to go out. Everywhere we turn, everybody's scared. I'm scared, don't sit too close to me. You gotta keep six feet away from me. I'm scared. There was a time when you were wearing a mask and going to the bank, they'll dial 911. To a bank, you couldn't walk in nobody's store with your face all covered up. They get scared of you. Now they're scared of you if you don't cover up your face. There's a shift in the atmosphere. But I fear God is getting us ready for a revolution. But great vexations were upon all the inhabitants of the countries. The pandemic not only affected the United States, it has affected the whole world. And God has some of us who still want to play church. And you want a pastor to play with your soul by giving you some nursery rhymes on Sunday. Listen, it's now time for somebody to be focused on God like your pastor. I want you to know philosophy is not going to get us there. Look at verse 6. And nation was destroyed of nation. Don't you see there's a sh something going on right now? It's like kingdom against kingdom. It's like nation against nation. Uh, uh, the, the police chief in Little Rock on, 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 on the TV frustrated. Too much children. Our young people are killing one another. I know we say black lives matter, but I want you to know God help us. Martin Luther King turn on each other, but to turn to each other. Here's that word from the Lord. It starts with hearing from the 
preacher again. Oh. It started with us not playing church anymore. And the nation was destroyed of nation and city of city. I thought the devil was doing it. Now I'm shocked at the next phrase I'm about to say. Y'all, I've been blaming the devil fully for all this mess. I've been telling there ain't nobody doing this but the devil. destroyed of nation and city of city or oh, what? For God did vex them with all adversity. God let all that hell break loose. God allowed the pandemic to break loose. No, I just took my hands off. Oh my God. He said, I just backed off. See, because he said, too many folks concerned about the White House, but not enough folks concerned about God's house. And God is saying that country is my.
leadership campaign. I know what he's trying to do, but we're only going to give so much. And so they got together at home and said, what they going to do? And if they ask you for any more, say, I ain't got no more. But God, Peter, give it to raise the offer. Who, who died first? Who? He? Was it Ananias that fell dead first? And then what happened? They raised the offer. Maybe I need to say, mm -hmm. Can I slow it down still? Look at verse 2 of this chapter. And he went out to meet Asa and said unto him, Hear ye me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you. What? While you be with him. If you want God to be with you, are you with him? Be with me, Lord. I just want to ask a question. Are you with him? Because God said, if you be with me, I'm going to be with you. And as soon as my feet strike Zion, So much to praise God for. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The Lord is with you while you be with him. The Lord is with you while you be with him. And if you seek him, he will be found of you. Oh, what you been seeking lately? I'm not seeking a position. I'm not seeking a title. I just want to seek God. Call me Robin if you want to. But that doesn't change who I am in God. What you've been seeking lately? Because when God opened the door for you, can't nobody keep you from going in it. What God got for you, can't nobody keep it from you. Come on, somebody say, help me, Holy Ghost. Oh, my God. He said, if you seek him, he will be found of you. In other words, God is saying, I know you got a pastor. But when it really boils down to it, you better seek him for yourself. Because you got a pastor who is not building the congregation to him. He's trying to build to God. And sometimes when he's doing it, he may be outnumbered with some folks want to do something else, but he got to hear what God is saying. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. You don't want me, I don't want you. Come on, come on. That's what God is saying. You don't want me. I don't want you. Look at verse 3. I'm going to get to it. What happened? For a long season, Israel has been without the true God. You know why you got a problem? We've been acting a fool for a long time. Playing church for a long time. And God is saying, What the problem? The first thing you've done is this. You have been without, number one, the true God. In other words, you can have a God 
but it's not the true God. You know, position has become a God for some people. Some people would rather have a position than to have salvation. You do know that, don't you? Some people like position more than salvation. Said no, that's not that's not so, Robert. I'm just wondering how you act. That's all. I'm just wondering how you act. He said, you, 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 you're without the true God. Here's another. And without a teaching priest. A teaching preacher. Second Corinthians. Chapter 4, verse 5. You need a teaching preacher. Not a preacher who gets going to make you shout in the Sunday. They can dance and run over to church. But a preacher is sometimes going to say some things that make you say, ouch. You know, some fruit I just don't like. I washed it a little bit. Y'all wash it again. Well, I got some juicy red apples from Pastor Rogers. It, it, it came from Rose. <laughs> <laughs> and I got one for Sister Rogers. Come on, you look at it. You know, he, you can tell the fruit just by looking at it. He looked at it before he even touched it. God has said, that's what I need some folks. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That can look at you. You must be a child. They can just look at you. You must be one of those believers. They can just look at you. I wonder what do people see when they look at you? You're See, that's some, it's good. That, that's some nutritious value. In those apples. They're some good apples. They're not just, they're not just, those are disciple made apples. Not just member of an apple bunch, but they are disciple made special apple. Okay, now, Pastor, go ahead and take your apple out of that bag and just hold it up. Take it out and hold it up. Look at that juicy red apple he got. I'm holding up so everybody can see. An apple a day will keep the doctor away. My goodness, my goodness. Oh, how juicy it looks. My goodness, my goodness. But you know, do I have anybody here that just don't like apples? No, don't up to it. I don't like apples. I don't like apples. Oh, look at it. You know, and I have grown up to it too. I don't get too much for them either. But I've gone to the fair. The state fair. Put up a jump. Hold that juice of red apple up. I don't care how it look. I just didn't get too much for that apple. But when I got to the fairground, they put some corn on me. They put some peanuts on me. And they dipped it in the corn. And then I don't like apples, but now I'm going through the fat girl. I'm loving it. But guess what? The nutrition value that's in that apple left when they put the corn in the peanuts. It's left. You don't want a preacher that's giving you some candy apple time. You don't want a preacher that's giving you the gospel that's been dipped in some karma. I want the gospel, the pure gospel. If you want to be healed, don't mix the gospel with anything else.
Come on, say, I want the whole thing just like it is. That's the problem with my second master. That's the problem with some of us. We want the preacher to dilute the gospel. You want him to mix it with some stuff. You know, the more you come to church and mix the gospel with a little stuff. Yes, I assume that Plato, Aristotle, Socrates, Euripides, how they're sitting around the Parthenon to discuss the great issues of life will always be an inspired paragon of philosophical verbalism. But I'll be sitting here, the fact that my nation has seen its best days over 2,000 years ago. But I'm here to tell you that the God of the telescope is also the God of the microscope. We know that the vastness of the telescopic universe that stretches out into endless space is also matched by the multidimensionalness of the microscopic universe that surrounds us. What did I say? <laughs> getting these games, these teams mixed up because I said I prefer the Razorbacks over the hole. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm in New York, you all. I'm in New York and the class just looked at me and they said, the teacher even said, what did you just say, Robert? And I thought they really wanted to hear what I had to say. <laughs> I say, I am from Little Rock. I'm from Arkansas. And I've always favored uh, the Razorbacks over the home. <laughs> <laughs> and they asked 
me one more time, they're going to see why I'm going to be that dumb. <laughs> oh, oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. I know the Razorback. I've had some friends on the Razorback team. I knew a coach named Lou Hope. I just stopped talking about the game, y'all. Just stop. Didn't know they were staying. Come on, somebody's having a go. But you got three teams on the field. One, two teams. On the field, but not the other field. God said, I need some folks. Who would be in the world, but not out, but not out of the world. Yeah. Now the two teams on the field, be it Pittsburgh, whoever, but there's a third team. The other two teams got 52 players, but the third team got nine players. And their kingdom is in New York. You heard of the commission of the NFL. So they got a book that they're going to make some rules. They're going to call the game by the book. Sometime in the stand, they're going to boo the official team. But I don't care how you boo, I'm not going to change my call. Oh, I need somebody. I don't care how you say I'm wrong. Misunderstood, but I'm still preaching because I got a feeling that if it just hang on in this practice, no weapon, no weapon, hold the dish and shell prophet. Say yeah, go back, let's get the word. Yeah, I got a feeling 
out of hand and say, you don't know. Get up out of hand and say, you don't know what I've been through. You don't know what I've been through. I don't know what you've been through. You may think you know, but guess what? It's all Yeah. 
And you know what? We wouldn't have so much conflict in Washington, D.C., the White House, if we didn't have so much conflict in the church. Conflict in the White House because of conflict in God's house. And as a matter of fact, we got first class conflict. Yes, 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 yes. First class. Yes. But if the church aligned with your pastor, they say, take us back, Lord. Take us back, Lord. To the place. As a matter of fact, how many are going to say, I'm not going to say, take me back. I'm getting up. I'm going back. I'm going back to my purpose. Get up. I'm going back to my calling. Get up. I'm going back. Stand now. It's prayer time. Thank you, Jesus. These are the times that try and you know what else and I say this by the way you're blessed pastor who loves God who was emphasizing the true God a teaching pastor and a person who understands that the supreme lawmaking body of this revolution that's about to happen is God's word. The law. The law. And thy word that I hid in my heart that I sinned not against you. But what I'm saying is this. Don't make his job hard. Yes, yes, yes. Don't make preaching hard. And sometimes some folks can't get delivered because we got too many folks in the way. And you need deliverance. There's a scripture that also makes that said this. Don't make his pastors leading you be without joy. Because when you become a rebellious person and, 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 and not a heart of God, you make the job for the pastor hard. And, and in other words, the Bible said, let him save you with joy. Don't let him be crying over you. Oh, God, these people. God, just give me strength. I love them. But I'm here to tell you, God got a calling for each of you here today. And this calling that God got for you, we got to stop having church specialists. But if you are a child of God, there's a calling on your life. And you got to find out which way God is moving through who? The pastor. Because, let me tell you one thing. God is saying, some of us are good. You have pursued a vertical relationship with me, but you are pitiful when it comes to your horizontal relationship with me. And the reason why I don't answer your prayers is because you have worked and perfected a vertical relationship with me, but you have ignored the horizontal relationship. Where is the horizontal relationship? Where is it? It's how you relate to the pastor. Because God has put the pastor here 
to represent him on the horizontal relationship. And God has said, you can't be, be big on the vertical relationship and weak on the horizontal relationship. Your prayers are hindered because of a problem with your horizontal relationship. Come on, sir, let's straighten this out. Let's straighten it out. Let's straighten it out. Let's pray. Gracious Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, God, for the word that you delivered for today. And I pray, God, now that the people of your house, that they will emphasize and that we become that example, recognize that you are the true God. And God, I thank you for the teaching preacher, the teaching preacher. Thank you for Pastor Rogers, the teaching preacher, a word from you. Thank you for a loving body. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And thirdly, the church is the supreme law-making body. Because love, we can't legislate in the White House. But it got to start in your house. And God touched everyone that's listening right now on the sound of my voice. And by faith, God, new direction unfolding. Now lift your hands, everybody. Now lift your hands. Lift your hands. And as your hands are lifted, look up towards heaven. Thank you, Jesus. Look up. Your redemption. Towards God. Look up. Hold your hand up. Hold your hand up. Your redemption. Is growing now. Lift, lift your hands. Your extremity is God's opportunity. And as your hands are lifted, Lord, my family need a touch. Lord, my house need a touch. Lord, lift your hands. Father, I stretch my hands. I'm not asking for material things. But now God I'm just asking to know you in a brand new way. And my faith, reach up and get it now. It's already done. And if you believe God for restoration, you believe God, hallelujah, for a new direction. You believe God that you're gonna learn how to support the man of God and you're gonna align yourself with the word of God. You understand that true God, you understand in love, the teaching, preaching, you understand that church has been the lawmaking body. Now clap your hand and thank God for your commitment. Everybody go. Come on and thank him. Love flows because God is in control. A church where God is really real. Hi, my name is Dennis Rogers, pastor here at the Greater New Bible Word Church of God in Christ. I would like to welcome you to our service.